Well, David, let's talk about the response to these explosions. Arkham's spokesman defended the company's response, and the Harris County Sheriff said the chemicals released are non-toxic. So why do you think it was so difficult to get more information? Uh, it has been difficult to get information from this company since yesterday. The company had a news conference yesterday and didn't tell all of the news media. Okay, that's fine. That's their prerogative. However, when we called to get information that was vital to public safety, we called more than three times, emailed as many times. We had producers in New York and on the ground here trying to get in touch with the company and never heard a word. Today they came out and held a press conference and to give them credit, the man stood there, Mr. Renard, a representative with the company, stood there and answered every question and then turned around and walked right into our camera and on CBSN Live answered the questions that we had. I don't know why it's been difficult to get information from them. Uh, I'll take him at his word when he said he's doing his best. Uh, what's confusing is that you have the federal, you have the local uh, fire agency spokesman, the assistant chief who said, hey, it wasn't an explosion. Well, if you take a picture and you take a look at the pictures that we have from that plant, it looks like there was an explosion. And he goes, well, when people hear the word explosion, they think big things. Well, they seem to be parsing words. The bottom line is there was some type of explosion, okay? Mm -hmm. Your gallon jugs that are in those trucks, Elaine, have 36,000 pounds of this organic chemical. And what's happening is, is the refrigerating machine uh, fails, stops working. The heat, and it is blistering hot out here right now, the heat essentially cooks this chem chemical and boom, right? So you have nine of these trucks that have the chemicals in them. One's already exploded, and they think the eight are going to go. It's just a matter of time. Hmm. Well, David, uh, we know a one and a half mile radius around the plant was evacuated prior to these explosions. Right. Can you give us a sense of what is yep. within that radius, and what could you see from your vantage point? Uh, it's kind of rural. I mean, I look behind me and there appears to be a neighborhood. Uh, you know, I mean, look, we're 20 miles outside the city of Houston, so it's certainly not as populated there. But there are, I want to say there were 300 or something people who were asked to evacuate. Now, I also want to say this. There was another clarification that came down this afternoon that even though an evacuation zone was established at mile and a half, some people may have stayed in. Hmm. Some people may have stayed in, and the sheriff said today, you know, we didn't pull them out. Uh, so, David, you already touched on this. Basically, the thinking is that there will be more explosions of some kind at this plant oh, yeah. in the coming it's days. Inevitable. And they're not thinking yeah. there's anything that can be done to prevent that because it's just too dangerous. Is no. that right? Too, 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 too far gone. It's hot. It's going to happen. The chemicals are there. There's nothing they say they can do. I mean, I specifically asked, if the water goes down, can you send anybody in? Can mm -hmm. you send them in right now in a boat to try? And he said, no, we, we, it is too far gone. Now, here's the interesting thing. The company has some way to monitor the refrigerating devices that are on each of the, the containers holding the chemical. So they were mm -hmm. able to give officials something of a heads up this morning to say, hey, we got one that's about to blow. Wow. Precarious situation there. David Begno reporting. David, thank you. You bet.